Hey everybody, this is Ori from AstroWeb, and in today's video, we're going to introduce Zendesk Guide, which is basically a help center website that you can put all of your content and you can answer questions and provide information to your customers without them contacting your support. So it helps you provide more information, helps reduce the number of tickets uh, in a contact with your customer service, and you can provide valuable information and content on this. So uh, we created one for this example, and I wanted to showcase to you how it works. Uh, and that's it. And this video, we're using not the light version, we're using the professional version. So it's, it's a paid one. Obviously, you should go to their website to check out the different uh, plans and how much they cost and the different features, but we're gonna display the first one that costs money, not the light, which is free. The, the actual one that is professional that is being used. So first of all, this is the user experience. This is your customer, your visitor. When they go to your website, this is your domain slash HC help center, and then the language, and obviously you can have multiple languages if you have a site for that, that they'll be able to see some information, your logo, they can open a ticket from here, which opens a support ticket. They can sign in to keep all of their tickets in one place and they can see some basic information. They can see your uh, banner, they can search for ticket information, for example, how do I do this? Or what's your return policy or et cetera. They can check for their questions and it'll search for all your tickets. And then they can see these categories and we'll talk about sections as well and some recent uh, articles that are there and some things like that. So let's look at a few examples. So for example, we have uh, To The Moon Plus is a Shopify and Cloudflare apps um, for e-commerce sites. Um, and so what we did is we have two apps or two services. One is called the Agree To Terms and one is called Holidays. So you see the customer can go and check out some question about holidays and they can see, okay, here's a question, what holidays do you support? And here's our answer, okay? Uh, and there's some attachment here, okay? Now the customer can follow, they can search for other things, and if you allow, com if you allow comments, they can actually comment here and you can respond to them. They can open a ticket and they can also vote to see if this is helpful or not to give you feedback, okay? Um, that's that's the very very basic thing you can go to agree to terms and you can see multiple questions here you can follow um, and that's it um, so let's let's look at some details to explain how these things work okay we're going to go back to the beginning so number one this is the back end of zendesk guide and in front of the the whole main thing about guide is for you to provide content. So typically either Q&A, right? So questions and answers or just general content or files to attach, etc. So you are providing what, what they call articles. So you're providing some information. You're saying, okay, uh, here's my question. What holidays do you support? And here's my answer. And obviously you can use this WYSIWYG. You can attach images and links and put some basic code and, you know, tabs and indents and things like that. When you write your article, you're going to have some settings here on the right. And so the first thing you're going to have is a way to save it and publish it. If it's not published, no one can see it here. If it is published, they can do that. And then you can specify who can actually manage this. There's, there's going to be a section here, uh, right here for publishing. So who can manage? Who do you allow? Which service agent or which administrator can create these articles, okay? Uh, second thing is who is it visible to? You can make this website visible to everybody so anyone who goes to this URL can see it. This is everyone. They don't need to be logged in. They don't need to be authorized. You can do that. The second one is you can require uh, your customers to sign in in order to see things, right? In order to open a ticket or see the content. And then the third one is you can cr create these things which are help a help center only for your internal employees, for example, your agents or admins, okay? Uh, once you create a piece of content, you have to assign it to a section, okay? So we're gonna talk about a section in a second. Um, so there's category sections and articles, okay? And then you you can specify if you want customers to comment, you can promote the article. So what is promote the article? That means you can promote it at the top uh, of your homepage, of your help center, of your guide, or on the top of the section or category. So for example, here, there's a star. Let me give you a better example. Here, there's two articles, but I wanted to promote this one. So this one is above, it is on the top, basically. 
okay? And then you can specify who is the author who wrote it, for example, the agent, which is me, and labels, which you can organize labels into later on organization and, and um, basically management, okay? So you can make things, um, excuse me, permissions is the word. So you can make things visible or not to certain users based on labels, for example. And then you can obviously up, upload a content. Um, and once you make changes, you can always go here and click on revisions and it'll stay, it'll keep track of all the things you did. So for example, originally I created this and then I basically added this right here on the bottom. You see it's highlighted. So you, see, you can see some revisions. You can see the language itself if you have more than one language. Now for languages, uh, based on your other Shopify, uh, excuse me, your Zendesk um, plan, if you have a higher plan, you can actually have multiple languages, but that will depend on your other plan uh, for this. Now we only have English in our particular plan, but you'll have a way to change the languages and support multi-languages, okay? And so basically the languages are always going to be in the URL itself, for example, here, okay? Um, great, so let's, let's continue. So we did the first thing, which is the most important, which is the content itself, the articles, okay? Now articles, you can publish, unpublish, like we mentioned right here, and then you post them. Once you post them, you click on save within 20, uh, 20 seconds or so, it'll be live on your section right here. For example, right here, okay? Now let's go into the next thing. If you allow spam, if you allow comments, uh, the system will have a section here to try to identify spam, and if so, it'll give you some list here so you can remove things as spam and then have a cleaner, better content information. So this is basic right here. Okay, now this is the most important part about arranging your articles. So there's two separate things that are going to be here, right here. Um, so articles we talked about, these are the pieces of content. Now, how do you arrange or organize the content? You're gonna have two things. You're gonna have a category and a section, okay? Categories are the highest level things. So category are the most basic ways you organize, just like you organize uh, in an e-commerce site, you organize products into categories, right? So you're or organizing them. Sections can be seen as subparts of categories. So let me show you an example. Um, let's go here to arrange content right here. So these are my categories. These are the top level. And I have right now one category called Shopify apps. And because I only have one category, it's not showing me the category. It's only showing me the sections because I only have one. But if I have two, for example, let me undraft this. Let me go here. Excuse me. I'm going to go here to categories and I'm going to go right here. So I can add categories here and I can edit them right here. Okay and I'm going to remove it from the draft. I want it to be public to everybody. I'm gonna click here, okay? And I'm gonna go right here and I can see. So now I have two types of categories. For example, I have apps that we've built for Cloudflare, which is one platform, apps we've built for Shopify, or it could be things like uh, customer service categories, it could be sales categories, it could be, so these are ways for you to organize. If you're e-commerce site, you might have returns, you know, things related to returns, things related to purchasing, things related to et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so if I go here right now, you'll notice that the section here changes. So let's go right here, let's refresh. Okay, so sometimes it takes a little time, usually within 20 or 30 seconds it takes. Um, while we're waiting for a second, aside from opening a ticket right here, you'll also have a way for your live chat in your settings to basically customers for opening tickets right here. So this is a nice way to have these features. In the live chat settings, you'll be able to enable this uh, if you want. So let's go back here, okay? And let's, let's check out what happened with our settings. So Cloudflare apps we just enabled. Okay, this should be okay, that's good. And let's go here to content, okay. Let's go here. Let's find one that's related. So when I connect a, con a piece of content, an article here, I can specify which section I want, right? So this is, for first of all, the section, Cloudflare app, Shopify apps, and the category. So let's go back here. Okay, perfect. So now it took about a minute or so, but now if you notice, I have these categories which will allow the customer to filter through the next section. So for example, if the customer only has a Shopify app, they can just continue here. So they can click here. And then when you notice here, there's these things called sections here, 
which are basically these subcategories, let's call them, or let's consider them as subcategories, which has all the FAQs or all the articles about the Agree to Terms app and the Holidays app, right? So I'm in the Shopify app. I have a spe special URL for this, okay? So if I go here, I'm going to go here. These are my categories. So let's click on Cloudflare apps. And then within the categories, I have sections, okay? So you have sections here. And this allows you to uh, create sub filters. Now you can also create subsections, so you can have sections of sections, but then you'll have to upgrade your plan, which we don't have right now, but you can at minimum do it this way. And so these sections, this is, you can edit the section right here and you can specify where it belongs to. Does it belong to this category, this category or other categories? Okay. And you can also sort them as well. Sort the order. Okay, so once you created that, then now you have your sections and then you go to your articles. So for example, this is my article right here and I'm going to specify where does it belong to. So it belongs to, let's say, this Shopify app. Excuse me, let's, let's show you one more time. So it, you, first you'll select the actual category and then within the category, then you'll select the section. So for example, this is the category and then the section is this and I select, which I've done right here. Okay, so now um, this is a way for you to organize. Now, based on your business, you're going to organize categories and then sections in a different way. And they all have their own URLs and they'll have a list of everything that they have here. Let's go here. So, for example, this is a section within the category Shopify apps. This is a section and then you have all the questions and answers and the articles right here. Okay, I uh, hope this makes sense. If you guys have any questions with details or how to organize, we can provide some feedback and just some basic uh, um, you know, recommendations, but every case and every website can um, organize in a different way, okay? So let's see what else we have here within the Help Center, okay? Um, this, is, this is themes, so if you, Basically, if you look here, there's a certain layout or design here. So there's a banner. It's pretty, you know, simple, white, um, things like that. So if you want to change the look of it, depending on which uh, plan you have for Zendesk Guide, you'll be able to, first of all, do a small customization here for your theme. And you can change things like colors, fonts, um, the banners, right? The banners here on the main area, the banners on the community area, etc. So things like that. And you can do some basic settings, like do you allow instant search? So when someone types in a question, do they see uh, kind of the recommendations? And then things like the homepage, um, things like that. So for example, if I want to remove recent activity, I'm going to click here, publish. When someone goes to my main section right here, recent activity, I can remove this if I don't want this. Okay. So let's go here and you see it's removed, for example. Uh, so these are just settings of <clears throat> some basic things you can do here. Now, one of the good things is if you do not have a light, um, not the free one, but if you have a paid one, just like we have, if you click on customize and you have a developer, you can also edit some basic code and you can make your pages, for example, your article page or your category, your section, your homepage, etc. You can change the content itself by clicking here, have a developer do some coding, some HTML changes. So that's a nice thing. Also, if you have the uh, non-light version like you have here, you can also purchase um, externally from other sites. You can purchase or make your own themes and you can just upload them or you can actually go to the marketplace and you can buy themes here. So for example, I'm just clicking on this theme right here and you can go and then you can view a demo and you can try it out and then you can change the theme. So for example, this is the basic free theme from Zendesk Guide, which looks okay. It'll all depend on the, the nice, you know, the image banner that you upload, but this looks much more professional, right? So you can see is a beautiful, there's some backgrounds and obviously you need to fit it for your theme. This is showing you the different languages if you have different languages. So you can purchase themes, install them, and then you can have a better service center. Okay. Um, other than that, uh, these are the permissions. So you can make some of your articles, content, et cetera, you can make them visible for certain people. So maybe, for example, you have certain agents, you want them to see certain articles, or you have certain customers that have, for example, let's say you have an e-commerce site and you have some customers that are VIP customers or they're special wholesale customers, they're special groups, 
special types of users, you can create some content or some articles. For example, maybe this one is only visible to certain customers. So you ha once you log in, maybe everybody sees this, but once you log in, only the logged in people that are VIPs or uh, wholesalers or whatever it might be, they might see certain types of content. So this is a nice way for you to do that. Um, this is outside the scope of this video. Go from there. The, the last few things we're going to talk about are some of the settings. So here you have some settings and you can specify some very basic things. So number one is allow voting on articles. So articles, for example, here, they can, uh, customers can follow, but they can also vote on. Okay. Um, the other things you can do is content moderation. Make sure that you check, uh, the system will check if you allow uh, comments. They'll allow you to, you know, verify that people don't say bad words or things like that. Okay. Um, other than that, do you allow customers when they, visitors, when they log in and want to open a ticket, do you allow them to sh have user profiles like a name, an image, etc.? cetera? Um, okay. Display unsafe content. Do you want to ha show the spammy or non-spammy? Do you require login? So when I'm on the website, if I click here, require login, Visitors cannot see anything on the site until they don't register. They won't be able to see any questions, articles, anything. Uh, they'll have to first register. Okay. And let's show you for a second. Um, let's do this. Okay. First they'll have to register. For example, I'm on a new window and then once they register, then they'll be able to actually use the site. Okay. So let's see an example. Okay, so take a little time. Um, let's let's go here. Okay, other than that, what do we have here? Um, how do you sort the request? Um, do you want to track your information, the visits to this site on Google Analytics, which you most likely do? So you'd have to plug in your UA tag code, um, and that's it. In some language settings, if you have more than one language, you can actually uh, add more depending on your package itself. That's, that's basically it. Also change the URL. If you go to Zendesk support or you go to your main um, thing, if you've upgraded, you can actually change to your own domain. For example, to themoonplus.com instead of a .zendesk slash, it's always going to be the same help center. Uh, and then the language, you can do that as well. Um, that's basically it. So if you guys have any questions about the details of this, let me know. Um, hope you enjoyed this video. We'll be making more and more Zendesk videos, obviously more e-commerce, Shopify, Magento, uh, web analytics, et cetera, et cetera. If you guys have any questions, contact me, uh, contact us, leave messages, subscribe, click on the bell, um, and we'll be making more and more videos for you guys. Thank you guys.